Should you buy a Nintendo Switch Pro controller? As gaming consoles go, the $300 Nintendo Switch is not unreasonably expensive, if you can find one, at any rate. Where you'll pay through the nose is for its accessories, $20 for a decent case, $30 for Joy-Con chargers, $90 for an extra dock. However, the likeliest accessory to throw the average consumer for a loop is the $70 Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, a traditional Xbox 360 style peripheral that seems ideally suited to long play sessions at home. Credit, Nintendo B default, the Switch comes with two small Joy-Con controllers, which both plug into a mounted grip that approximates a regular controller. It's not a terrible way to play long-lasting and or demanding games like The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, or Ultra Street Fighter 2. The question is, is it really worth $70 just to get something that's marginally more comfortable? I pondered this exact question back when I first got a Switch and was gearing up to play The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild. I don't mind spending money on an accessory that will be truly useful, but for the price of a pro controller, I could have gotten a brand new Switch game with enough left over for a six pack of decent domestic beer. Not to mention, the Switch has sold remarkably well, but so did the ill fated Wii U when it first came out. Investing a ton of money in accessories for the Switch might not be a great idea if the system tapers off after a year or two. Credit, Nintendo in case you've never seen one, the Switch Pro controller is very similar to a number of other controllers for other consoles, PCs and mobile devices. There are two analog sticks, the right hand stick is lower than the face buttons, more similar to the Xbox design than PS4, a D-pad, four face buttons, four shoulder buttons and a number of navigational buttons in the center. The device connects via Bluetooth to both the Switch and PCs, and is a bit bigger and heavier than the Joy-Con grip. I polled my coworkers who'd have been using Switches for longer than I have to see if the expensive accessory could enhance my upcoming adventure in Hyrule. Some have pro controllers, some don't. Of those who don't, some want them, and some are content to go without. If you play on your TV a lot, a pro controller is almost essential, said Sam Rutherford, former senior product review analyst for Tom's Guide. The ideal setup is to have a pro controller for use at home, so you can leave your Joy-Cons docked at all times. This way, he said, you can just pick up your Switch and leave it any time, rather than having to go through the arduous process of disconnecting the Joy-Cons from the grip and reattaching them to the console proper. Nintendo Switch Pro Controller $69.95 Amazon Rutherford also pointed out that Joy-Cons don't charge in the standard controller grip. Instead, you have to buy a separate $30 charging grip, and a $70 controller is arguably a better deal than a $30 grip whose only purpose is to do something the console dock already does. A Pro Controller could also help, depending on what genre of games you plan to play. Fighting games would suck on the Joy-Cons, Andrew Friedman, staff writer for Tom's Guide, pointed out, explaining that the more traditional D-pad on the Pro Controller could be almost vital for pulling off difficult combos. The Pro Controller also simply feels good to hold. That's not a trifle, if you're going to sit down and play a deep, involving game for a few hours at a time. After owning a Pro Controller for a few months, I can confidently say, that it holds its own with the DualShock 4 and Xbox One pad. It's one of the comfiest and highest quality Nintendo controllers I've ever held, said Mike Andronico, senior editor at Tom's Guide. More, Nintendo Switch Review, how Nintendo won me back on the other hand, there's one huge reason, to avoid the Pro Controller, the Switch is partially, and some would argue primarily, a portable console. As such, the Joy-Cons attached to the tablet screen are the ideal way to experience any game, regardless of how intricate the controls can be. I played all of Breath of the Wild and only connected the Switch to the TV once, Friedman said. To me, the Switch is the best ever handheld console, and I don't need a pro controller for that. Andronico agreed, explaining that he generally plays the Switch on the go, limiting a pro controller's utility. 
Considering that I spend about 80% of my Switch time in handheld mode, I still wonder if I've gotten my full 